Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. There has been a monstrous spike in new XRP accounts that have been created, uh, in particular since the beginning of July. But as it turns out, upon closer examination, there are actually a few notable jumps out of nowhere which are a bit uncharacteristic. Not that there haven't at times been random jumps, but it's been interesting the way in which these unfolded, and I've been looking at this, these charts for years, and what we've seen is a little bit peculiar, and I think I know why. I feel very confident that I know exactly why we saw these accounts spike. Now, normally, uh, this happens during times when there's increased adoption surrounding crypto. That's, that's one reason that we've seen it historically. There's a whole bunch more people jumping into crypto, including XRP. A certain percentage of them, even if it's a small percentage of people who jump into crypto, will self-custody, including XRP holders. So you can see spikes like that. Um, I actually don't think that new adoption is what pushed the additional. So, look, to be clear, not that none of them would have been moving their XRP uh, because they're new purchasers of XRP. On any given day, you're going to find some of those. I don't think that's what was driving this, though, so I'm going to share with you what I think. Um, also got a very brief update on Jed McCaleb's XRP balance, which is uh, it, it increasingly hurtling towards the zero mark. He won't be holding XRP much longer. And then I also want to share with you thoughts from a validator on the XRP ledger who seems to have concerns about a new project that has launched on the XRP ledger. Uh, concerns have been voiced, and this project is ignoring the, the the concerns and questions that are being asked. So I just thought I'd mention it because uh, I just want to protect the XRP community. I don't have the answers as to whether or not this thing is or is not a scam definitively, but this is kind of peculiar behavior. If people are bringing concerns to your attention and you're not scammy, you should probably answer, right? But um, <clears throat> before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so under the first topic, which I find very interesting, this topic of number of new accounts activated on the XRP ledger. So that's the chart that's in the middle of your screen right there. And <clears throat> again, like I said, typically when you see these spikes... Uh, just looking back historically, it's, it's been during times of crypto adoption, just in a general sense. And there could be other things that drive it, like if there's a, a frenzy around airdrops, we saw that towards the later half of 2021. Uh, that was a newer development. It really, to be honest with you, it really historically has just been when in times where there's a frenzy around crypto, that's when you're likely to see it. Now, most people, I believe anyway, this is my hypothesis, most people that buy XRP on exchanges, they leave that XRP on exchanges. And, um, and those, those wallets are actually shared wallets. So w when people are buying XRP for the first time, we don't know how many new people are purchasing XRP because it's all pooled together. We, we don't know. And also on top of that, on exchanges, depending on the way that they're formatting, like they may say, hey, here's your XRP. It's allocated. You can see it on an account, but that doesn't mean you're viewing it on the blockchain necessarily. It depends on the platform that you're looking at. It may not have been allocated. It may have been the case that they say it's yours, but they didn't actually move it on the XRP blockchain. They may not have even actually moved it. Um, and as long as that's all legal, like there's not necessarily a problem with that. But in terms of tracking how many new people are jumping into XRP, eh, makes things a little bit stickier, doesn't it? Um, and then there's also on the flip side, I understand there are people like me that have multiple XRP accounts. So it's like, how many people actually hold XRP? No way to know, but I think it's way, way, way more than the total number of accounts. And we know that there are somewhere in the neighborhood of about 4.2 million accounts in existence. But again, I, I suspect most people just in general, whether it's XRP or pick or crypto, most are not being the most responsible and they're choosing to not self custody. And so there's a lot of increased risk leaving your XRP on, on an exchange, even if they're historically trustworthy, like Coinbase, for example, right? Or Binance, you know, pick, pick your, your your exchange that's currently trusted, okay? There's still risk associated with that. And it doesn't mean there's no risk if you self-custody. I get it. You could accidentally expose your 24-word seed phrase, or there's, there's things that can go on. You, if, you're, if you're the type that is actually literally memorizing the seed phrase, and then you lose your hardware wallet, and you forget the seed phrase, okay, fine then you are screwed. So there are trade-offs. I, I understand that. I just think it's more risky to keep your XRP on a centralized platform, no matter how reputable they are today. And even if they haven't historically had any problems, uh, to me, I, I'm not willing to take that risk personally. 
So what's what's actually been going on here? Because you're seeing like, you know, 1,000, 2,000 new accounts per day. Um, well, again, I think way more people are jumping into XRP in the first place. But these recent spikes dating back to the beginning part of May, uh, I don't I don't think, like I said, and I'll, again, I'll explain right, right now, I don't think that it has anything to do with new adoption of XRP, which is the first time I've ever thought that when looking at these. Well, other than the airdrops. Okay, so the, the second time. Uh, so the time period for this chart, the number of new accounts activated on the XRP ledger, this uh, I, I chose a, a date range of May 5th through uh, July 10th, which is today, 2022. And <clears throat> you may note that um, things, the S word, let's just say the S word started to hit the fan in the beginning part of May. You may recall, and so look, w when did uh, new accounts start spiking? If you look on the screen here, you could, you could argue it's about May 11th. Because you went from the day before 1,400-ish uh, new accounts created, then the next day, 2,179. The day after that, 3,135. Whoa, well, what the hell's causing a big jump like that? How about this news? <laughs> look at this headline from CNBC. And I'm sure you all are aware of this at this point, but look at this. It, it lines up perfectly. Controversial stablecoin UST, which is meant to be pegged to the dollar, plummets below 30 cents. So the headline isn't quite correct. It was... Um, <laughs> It was backed by Luna. UST, yeah, it's supposed to be always worth $1, but it's actually backed by Luna. And then confidence was lost in Luna as market was falling. And then people started to get, be like, uh-oh, what, uh, what if that means that uh, this thing, what if it goes to zero, then and that's what's backing UST. And so people started to get a little shaky about UST, and they were starting to sell their UST for less than a dollar because they just wanted something. They wanted to get out. Then that gave <laughs> result in people being even less confident, confident in Luna. And it was this death spiral. Um, they, they were both making each other go down in price. Maybe don't back a freaking stable coin with a highly volatile cryptocurrency, you idiot sticks. But that's what they did. And so, the, so look at that, though. So what I'm saying is this prompted XRP holders to do a very responsible thing. And they're like, yeah, this is scary as hell. It's completely scary as hell. It prompted people. This is, this, is my, this is what I'm surmising. It prompted people within the XRP community to take action. So it was this blip. It jumped up thousands and thousands of new accounts, XRP into self-custody, moving from exchanges, and then it went back down. And it found another normal down here until the next horror story happened. And what happened next? Well, take a look at this headline from June 13th this year from CNBC. Crypto lender Celsius pauses withdrawals due to extreme market conditions. So there you go. Uh, Celsius, which is basically a crypto bank, uh, they would take your crypto from you if you gave it to them, and they'd give you uh, you know, an a return in terms of interest. Maybe it's a 7% interest rate. Uh, the highest they ever offered, I think it was somewhere a little shy of 20%, maybe 18 or 19%, but for most of the, the, the coins that you gave them, you'd earn like 7 or 8%. Now, mind you, there was no actual uh, economic output as a result of this happening. They were just taking your crypto, and then they were lending it out to people, and then the people they lent it out to were making increasingly risky bets trying to get incredible returns. But then, of course, as you enter bear territory, it all comes crashing down, which is exactly what happened. But again, that's June 13th. Now, take a look at the chart. What happened here? Well, June 12th, 1,112 new accounts. Then the very next day, 2,438. So you had another spike. And then things started to calm down a bit. And you can see it got back to a norm, new normal where maybe about the, on average somewhere in the neighborhood about 1,300 new accounts were being created today. But then there was even more fallout as, as markets continue to get even more ridiculous based on very irresponsible behavior by, by players in the space, big players in the space, right? So here's the headline from July 1st from CNBC. Major crypto broker Voyager Digital suspends all trading deposits and withdrawals. So this is a cryptocurrency exchange and um, they, they couldn't pay it back. They lent out your crypto and they, as a result, couldn't allow anybody to, uh, to, to withdraw because they didn't have the money to give you. So you literally just couldn't. Again, that was July 1st. Here's another headline from CNBC the next day. Crypto hedge fund Three Arrows files for Chapter 15 bankruptcy. Uh, mind you, Three Arrows owed Voyager an F-word ton of money. I, I think it was like, what, 650 million-ish? I'm pulling from memory, so I could be wrong, but I think it was something like that. So again, that's the beginning of the month. Now here's the chart again, number of new XRP accounts activated. And it encouraged people clearly 
to uh, go ahead and create the, some new accounts here. Because that news was breaking initially, I think it was towards the later part of July 1st, so you had on that day 1,969 new accounts, but the very next day, 2,879 accounts. Well, my friends, I don't think that this is coincidence. I think that it's people in the XRP community getting, get, getting a bit spooked. So uh, let this in part serve as a public service announcement. If you've not yet taken self-custody, consider doing so. And again, it's not that there's no risk if you choose to do so, but my gosh, the alternative to me, this is my personal opinion, you do whatever you want. The, my personal opinion is it's, it's way more risky to, to not um, get your crypto off of a centralized exchange. Because if, if you don't have the keys, well, it's not your crypto. Not your keys, not your crypto, right? I mean, that's the phrase anyway. Now, legally, it's, they still owe it to you, but uh, you, don't have, you don't have complete control over it is the point. They're controlling the actual wallet, you know? Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a scary prospect here. So I just wanted to say, a lot of your fellow XRP holders, so far as this is what I'm speculating here, a lot of your fellow XRP holders have been like, yeah, that's scary as hell. I'm going to go ahead and finally take the initiative. And once you get going, it's not that daunting. And I'm not going to endorse any product. I'm happy to share what I've done, and I'm not getting paid to say this. Um, I, I happen to be using uh, Ledger Nano S. I have multiples of them, actually. And um, and, and you, don't, you don't need multiples of them. They also have a Ledger Nano. I've never bought the, I think the other one's called X, uh, which holds more... Uh, if you've got a whole bunch of cryptos, I just went the route of the S for reasons I won't get into in this particular video, but, um, it's, it's been good other than, uh, like the screen on it. I bought a couple that had a couple dead pixels and lines through them. But other than that, like they actually work. So I was a bit disappointed about that, but I was like, yeah, whatever. Not going to worry about returning it. But, um, other than that, no, in terms of like how it actually functions, it's very user friendly anyway. So just make sure you do your research, whatever you decide to do, be careful of phishing scams. There are ways for this to go horribly wrong. So just, just make sure that you've educated yourself, but there's, there's risks either way, you know? Um, and then we've got this Jed McCaleb, the, the guy that came up with the idea for XRP He's down to 26 million XRP after starting with 9 billion after all of these years. It's so good to see. So um, he's supposed to run out at the current pace in five days. Now, on the day that that happens, I think I'm probably going to give a, a lengthy explanation of the impact that Jed selling his XRP has actually had on the market, because I think there's there's some widely held misconceptions within the XRP community, and understandably so. It's The, the markets are complex. There's a lot of angles to consider here, but I've been thinking about it for four and a half years. I've, I've thought it through. I've, I've thought of, I, I don't know if there are other angles to think of at this point, because anytime I talk to anybody about this concept or I read other opinions, I'm like, well, I've seen that opinion. I've seen that perspective. Uh, if you got a new angle, that would be really fun to talk about. But all that to say, I'm just saying like, I've really thoroughly thought this through. And it's not that selling doesn't impact the, you know, um, the XRP over time. I mean, even me selling one XRP, it has a, an impact. It'd just be a really small one. But in terms of, is XRP, did it not go on a rally because of Jed McHale? No, that's a silly thought. So I'd like to articulate that further. Maybe I'll save that for um, the glorious day where this account balance of 26 million on your screen right here reads as zero, which if he continues to sell, again, it's just a matter of days. All right, now the final topic. This comes from a uh, XRP ledger validator, rippleitin.nz on Twitter, a tagged a project on the XRP ledger called Magic Mint, and um, so this is their uh, official Twitter account, 989 followers, joined April 2022, so it's brand new, and there's some critiques here. Um, I'd say that it's gotten enough attention based on the likes. I don't know how the person operating the Magic Mint Twitter account couldn't have noticed based on the, the small follower size they have, and I don't mean that as a dig against them. I'm just saying I know what it is to be overwhelmed with notifications when you're tagged constantly 24 seven, like literally they're not getting that. And so what I'm saying is with the number of likes that they got on this thread, um, they had to have seen, I'd be surprised. I don't know that for sure. I'd be surprised if they didn't see that there was this thread with all these likes that should have jumped out at them. And it's also been well over 24 hours since this thread was posted and they've not responded. I did check before recording, at least to this point, they haven't said anything, and that's kind of alarming to me. And so this isn't for me to make. I'm not recording this to, to make accusations specifically against them, but 
I would like to do what I can to help try to help protect my fellow XRP holders out there. So I'm just warning, if you're participating in stuff like this, just do your own research and be aware of what you're getting into. And if, uh, if Magic Mint ends up responding, I'll be happy to cover that in a few future video. But right now, there's nothing but questions. And this is from a respected XRP Ledger validator who's been in the space for many years. And so Ripple at N.NZ wrote, Magic Mint XRPL, that's the, the handle, at Magic Mint XRPL. I'm trying to understand a couple of things from your website. You state Magic Mint runs on Ripple. Then you state that the XRP Ledger is the network. I'm confused. Are you using their proprietary software or are you using XRP or both? So I'll just pause the note here. My, I'll hazard a guess that they're not partnered with Ripple. I'm going to hazard a guess. And if they are, fantastic. That would be neat. That, then they should just clear this up, come out and be like, oh yeah, no, here's, here's why. In which case, this is still sloppily worded. But um, I'm going to hazard a guess that they don't exactly know what they're talking about, but launched a project. That's my concern. So if that's not the case, it would actually be kind of awesome. I'd still have the critique again, like I said, in terms of, yeah, you could have worded it less sloppy. It created confusion. Uh, but they seem to be conflating Ripple and the XRP Ledger. Not good if you're launching a project on the XRP Ledger. You should know that. Anyway, the validator continues. Given that your token Mint is issued on the XRP Ledger, isn't Magic Mint run on the XRP Ledger and not Ripple? They are decidedly different. Also, you highlight that you are a trusted digital asset management company on the XRP Ledger. Your assets in management show as zero. So who trusts you and how did you earn this perceived trust? Have you had previous digital asset management experience? And if so, where? I note also that you've had previous experience on the XRP Ledger with a previous token issuance. What is happening with that project? Looking forward to some clarity. And again, that was over 24 hours ago. There's been no response to this. I'm just concerned about rug pulls. And if somebody's non, like I like to give people the benefit of the doubt for sure, you know. Um, but if you're non-responsive and you're running a project, like you should be all over this. You know, whoever's running their social media, they should be all over this, squashing this thing before it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, but they don't seem to be willing or able to. So I just wanted to point it out. And again, if there's any official news from, or word from Magic Mint in the future, because I want to be fair here, I'll be happy to report on that. Unfortunately, right now, that's not what we're seeing. So just be careful if you participate. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.